Stewart. It's Wednesday, it's hump day, and welcome to our loyal followers and, and many new followers who have been joining us on this journey of evolving in our investment strategies. Today is gonna to be a heavy day. We're gonna review questions that were raised yesterday, but today's a, gonna to be a tough day, so you know, you're gonna to have to buckle up. But those of you who are new, every day we review our portfolio, uh, which is a combination of stock and options. We are focused on the tanker industry, and we're invested in four different tanker stocks, and they're each using a different combination of stock and options. And we're tracking our P&L, our open P&L, and our P&L year to date. So you can see what the impact is and the different strategies that we're doing in real time. Welcome aboard, and let's go quickly because there's a lot to cover today, and we don't have a lot of time. So fortunately, we're going to have to breeze through this pretty quick. I've already answered all the questions in here. Uh, we talked about there's a big piece of news. Brokerage House downgraded Frontline and DHT yesterday, and then this morning Morgan Stanley was announced as the winner of Frontline's deal to sell 100 million shares into the market. So Morgan Stanley is going to pick up a nice investment banking fee to get that deal done, but they're raising, they're selling 100 million shares of stock, and there's only 200 million shares outstanding. Jason's asking about trying to simplify and add some definitions in to the videos. I've done that with this one. I've just done a couple. Unfortunately, Jason, this one's going to be a bit heavy. Some people are going to have to come back to this later to really appreciate the benefits of learning what we're doing today. Yoni was asking about, uh, he's looking at another stock and he's selling naked calls. Do not sell naked calls in tiny stocks with big short positions of 40% or more. Just move away from selling short calls. What you're going to see today is I'm dealing with the issue of having sold a naked call in a stock and it had been exercised against and now I'm going to have to pay a dividend. So doing short calls can get yourself into a lot of trouble. Just you're better off. Just don't do it. I'm not going to encourage you guys to be selling naked calls. The only calls I want you selling are covered calls where you own the stock and you're locking in a profit. I'm all for locking in profits. I don't want unlimited losses. Okay, so there's a few questions around the portfolios. I, I've already answered their questions. You can go back and look at them. There's just too much to cover today. I, I, I could spend half an hour just on the questions. I apologize. I'm not going to give them a lot of attention in today's video. I've answered them all last night, and I've spent this morning trying to manage this debacle in my portfolio and frontline. So that's what's happening. I want people to be able to benefit from the key learnings we're getting from managing our portfolio in real time. So what we're going to do next is... Here's the outline for, for the rest of the video. We're going to quickly look at the portfolio. We're going to quickly look to see how the peers are performing as of 2 p.m. on Wednesday. And then the last section is all about how to manage a short call exercise assignment on a ex-dividend stock. That's that piece. We're going to look at how we got into it. We're going to see what happened to us last night. And then we're going to talk about what we need to do to unwind it. So this is a great learning. You won't find this in the book. So we're, we're going to push ahead with that. So let's get moving. Okay, we've got a pretty heavy session today. So buckle up. We've had a quite unique event happen to us overnight. I want you guys to learn from this. This is a great learning example. There's not too many opportunities you get to see this happen. There's over 100 videos that you can watch to pick up little bits and pieces. I've tried to make it as simple as I can, but this is like a huge event. If you look on our portfolio here, nothing's changed in any of our stocks except for one, which is Frontline. The ex-dividend date was today on Frontline. If you remember, we were long 100 shares and we were short two eight calls and long one put. All our calls are gone. And this is not 100 shares. This is a negative 100 shares. Our 100 shares are gone and we're now short 100 shares. And then somehow we were down $25 yesterday, and now we're up $60. I haven't even made any adjustments yet. So I'm short 100 shares of Frontline, which means I lose money if the stock goes up. So obviously I need to cover this. I'm not the kind of person who shorts stock. You have to pay interest when you borrow shares, and it's those short sellers like an NAT who ultimately get squeezed at some point off the back of some catalyst, and then they have to buy it back at any price and they just get slaughtered. So I don't want to be a part of that. I'll hop over just so you can see what's happening from a P 
peer perspective. It's 2.30 p.m. I got to get this out before the market closes. What we see here is a couple stocks are trading higher, uh, but the bulk of them are trading a little bit lower. Now, here's the concern here. One is, as usual, oil's up another 1% like it is every day. But the other concern is if, if Frontline is out there selling new shares with the stock 52-week low was $6, and they're doing it at 8 their high year high was 13 who else is going to decide? I mean, normally companies do this when they're desperate for cash or when their stock price is too high. The same way that Elon Musk decided to go to the market and sell shares when the stock was over $900 a share. So this is a very concerning to me anyway. Now, there's two scenarios that could happen. Morgan Stanley could just go out and just dump the shares, or they could do what Tesla did, which is, you know, they they kind of pump up the shares and then issue them at higher prices. But they usually do that before they announce this. So I'm concerned if stocks in the tanker sector are now going to start issuing hundreds of millions of shares when the stocks are already depressed. Because as I said yesterday, I'm looking at Q3 and I'm wondering, what kind of rates are we looking at in Q3? Q2 is going to be great, but what's in Q3? And Q3 worries me because it's a seasonally slow time. Like, I expected NAT to do that. When their stock hit 9, I was expecting them to come out and say that they were issuing a bunch of shares at 8. And then we're sitting here at 440. That's what I was expecting to happen, and it did not happen. The fact that someone's willing to do this right now with the stock trading a lot lower, that concerns me a little bit because I don't understand... The logic for now they're saying that they want to be opportunistic I, you know I, this this concerns me now as an investor you always got to be skeptical but you know we want to we want to be positive about our investments but we want to take each data point and get a sense of what it means so this concerns me and then i got to wonder who else is going to try to issue shares now it's just speculation right but anyway let's hop over to frontline we got to Buckle up, folks, because this is not easy, but man, this is going to be a great learning opportunity for you. You will not find this in a book, so let's get at it. Okay, so we're putting the pieces back together. We're trying to figure out what happened to our position in Frontline. Okay, so if we go back to May 19th at 2.40 p.m., right in here, this is where we put our trade on. And so on May 19th at 2.40 p.m., right here, right in here, okay, we bought 100 shares at 7.88, we sold two 8 calls for 70 cents, and we bought an 8 put for $1.10. And what we were hoping to do was to collect the dividend and then have a risk-free profit. So the only risk to this strategy was if the stock shot up and we were exercised against. This is what a few people pointed out in the comments. They said, hang on, uncle, this is not a risk-free trade. If this stock shoots up, you could end up having your stock called away. And that's right, that is true. And that's what happened. So now let's figure out how bad this got and not only that but because we had an extra short call we actually ended up getting assigned a naked short call and we ended up with 100 shares so this is a real interesting example real life example of how this works let's go through this and figure out what happened how bad did we get hurt let me summarize what happened overnight and then we'll take a step back and talk about what we had to start with we'll talk about where we ended up and then we need to understand the implications for our P&L, right? So that's what we need to talk through. So here's what happened overnight. Because the call options had no extrinsic value and they were in the money, the owners of the calls exercised them, all right? So we had two calls that we were short. We had two calls that we sold that we had not yet bought. So those were short calls. And one call was a naked call. In other words, we sold a call that we did not own, and we did not own any shares. So the calls were not protected. Calls were not covered. And if the calls are not covered by owning shares, then there's nothing covering them. They're called naked. They're called naked calls because you don't own the shares to protect you. 
and because you're naked calls, you have unlimited risk to the upside. Okay, so that's the way, that's the terminology that's used. So we owned one covered call because we had 100 shares, and then we also were short one naked call. We did not own the shares, and both of them were exercised and assigned. Okay, and so what does that mean? Let's look at what we started with. On May 19th, we bought 100 shares of stock at 788. We sold two calls, and then we bought one put. Now, I'm not going to talk about the put because it really doesn't impact what happened on the exercise. So let's just set that aside. Yesterday, or this morning after last night's event this is what we ended up with instead of being long 100 shares we're short 100 shares instead of owning instead of being short a covered call and short a naked call they were gone there were no calls okay and so the implication of that is the shares that we had owned at 788 were sold at the strike of 8 okay and so the, here's what the impact is of this. So because I took our 100 shares at 8, we made a $12 profit. And because they exercised our calls, the calls that we sold for $70 or 0 0.70, they were exercised. We got to keep that premium. So we got to keep $70 from both of those. So when we bought the 100 shares at 788 and we made $12 you're saying gosh that's not very much money you bought it for 788 and you sold it for 8 don't forget that in order their right to take our shares at 8 that was a covered call and we sold that covered call for $70 now it's just coincidental that the price of the call that we sold at 70 is the same value of the dividend. It's just coincidental. So what happened is not only did we make $12 because they took our stock, but the right to take our stock, they had to pay us for that right. And that covered call was $70. So we actually made $82 profit. Not bad, right? We made 10% for two weeks. Now, we also sold a naked call, and that naked call that we sold, we collected $70 for that. So that's a $70 profit. And then, I mean, just ignore the put. I'm just letting you know. I mean, obviously, our total PL is what matters, but I've included the put just so that we don't ignore our PL of everything. But the put that we bought is declining in value over time, and that's what happens when you own options, they decay over time. So we had sold two options and the decay worked to our advantage and then we bought one option and then that one ended up losing money. But now look what's happened is we're actually short 100 shares at eight. In other words, we're short shares that we don't own. So what is the implication of being short shares that we don't own? And the implication there is that we have unlimited loss to the upside. So I'm not comfortable being short shares in a normal situation. So you won't find me shorting shares normally. If it gets put to me, it does. So we obviously we need to cover that short 100 shares in the market. And then right now, if we'd covered it, we would lose $10. So in that case, we would lose $10 on the short sale. But don't forget, the reason that we're short 100 shares is because we sold a call for $70. So in reality, we're not down $10 in the 100 shares. We're actually up $60 in reality, right? Because we got to keep that $70 in premium. So in reality, we ended up not losing money in this situation. We're actually up $77. Can anyone think of anything else that we're missing out on here? Is there anything else that's going to impact our position? What else are we forgetting about? All right, so let's look at the result 
and let's include anything else that will affect our P&L. Summarizing this in different ways so that hopefully this will sink in. So I'm repeating what I said earlier, but in a slightly different way, and hopefully this will help you understand the results a bit better. So what was the impact? Okay, so we sold two calls at 70 cents each, and they were both exercised. So if you sell an option and it's exercised, you get to keep that premium. So that means we made $140 profit. What else happened was, we had bought shares at 788, and because of the exercise of the option, the shares were sold at the strike price, which was eight. So we made a $12 profit. So we're actually up $152. Okay, but part of the assignment exercise is that we didn't have 200 shares; we only had 100 shares. So one naked call, which was a call that was not covered with 100 shares resulted in us owning, well, I shouldn't say own, resulted in us being short 100 shares at the strike price of eight. And right now the stock is 810. So we're actually down $10 on that. Okay. So we're losing $10 there. So the net effect of those three is we're actually up $142 profit. So instead of losing money by being exercised against, we actually made money. Now let's not forget about the put. Put's been losing value over time. And so the value of the put's down $65. So our net P&L is we're up $77. Now what are we missing, if anything? So the piece that we're missing is we're short 100 shares at eight. Yesterday, when the owner of record was entitled to a 70 cent dividend. So two things happened. One is we were expecting to get our dividend of 70 cents when we bought the stock, sold a call and bought a put. But we're not gonna get that 70 cents because the stock went up and we got exercised against. So we're not gonna get a $70 dividend. So that we don't get. But what else happened is we ended up short 100 shares at the eight strike. And as a result of that, we have to pay the dividend to the person who was entitled to the dividend, right? Because we're short 100 shares. So because we're short 100 shares, they're going to deduct $70 from our account. So we owe the dividend because we borrowed those shares to be able to be short them. So, we're going to lose $70. And so what's the net effect? So the net effect is we've actually made a profit of $7. Here's an example of the workflow for a situation where you're short shares as a result of an assignment. So as it turns out, they're not all horrible events that result in catastrophic losses. In reality, it doesn't really change anything. The only thing left to do in terms of managing this trade is we basically have to buy back 100 shares of stock so that we're not short 100 shares, right? So that's the only management component we have. And then we need to sell our put. So there's two trades that we have to do as a result of this. And the net impact of it is we'll make a $7 profit instead of, I think we were originally targeting like a $40 profit in there. So we still made a profit, but we didn't make as big a profit because our shares were exercised against us. So it's not a catastrophic event when it happens. So I hope that helps. Take some time to think it through. Leave your questions down below. I always answer all questions that are raised. I hope this helps you evolve your investment strategies for your portfolio. But as always, stay small, don't be greedy, try to understand the workflow around it, try to understand the implications. If you don't have a lot of capital in your account, you have to be careful if you're short shares or long shares. If your account's really small, you may not be able to take delivery of shares. And if that happens, you have to appreciate 
that if your broker gives you the flexibility to do this kind of trade, if you don't have the capital, the trades will settle in two days. And so within those two days, you need to liquidate the stock that you're short or long if you don't have the capital to acquire it. So if you have margin capabilities with your broker and you don't have enough money, they'll obviously offer to loan you money, but you need to think about covering whatever exposed positions you have that you can't pick up with cash within the two-day settlement window. I hope that helps. Keep evolving and good luck. Feedback down below. Think about subscribing if you want to be a part of our journey on learning how to invest in the market.